Hello everyone and welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In today's video we are going to be designing the case studies page and specifically we're going to take a look at what we have created in the previous episode which is this wireframe, this layout and then we're going to start turning this into an actual final polished design. So that's what we are doing today, let's get started. So first of all we have to enable the layout guide, the layout grid for this page and as you can see we have one right here which uh, I'm going to copy by clicking on the layout grid with this frame selected. Command C to copy, select this case studies frame and then Command V. Um, so I'm just gonna recap for a little bit what this actually means because we have done this all the way back in like the first episode I think even. So uh, we are using a 12 column grid, a 12 column layout where each of these columns is 74 points wide and the gutter between individual columns is 24, right? So the total width comes up to be 1152, right? So that's the full width of, of this layout, basically. And yeah, so let's just take a look at what we have created in the previous episode, what is actually the wireframe, what does the wireframe say? So we have a headline, subheadline, and a button, and then an image on the right side with some metrics, some numbers, numbers floating around to show the value that our app provides. So I'm going to use my text tool and start typing, right? So T on my keyboard, click once, and then I'm going to type in on average, our customers see a 30% improvement in something. Obviously, this is just a text placeholder. And usually this something is a metric, is something measurable or potentially impactful for your users and sh should resonate with your target audience. So if you are, for example, developing an app that uh, is targeting uh, creative professionals and their teams, you might wanna say something like, on average, our customers ship their final designs 30% faster, or something like that, right? So obviously just a placeholder for now. And I am going to also duplicate this and type in some more details. So let's say like, this is a paragraph that will outline more benefits and the specific value product provides right so we get just a paragraph of text that's that's going to be just right beneath this headline i'm going to use my text styles on the right side and i am going to search for paragraph body text and then i'm going to use that right here or actually maybe h4 h4 headline i'm not sure about this yet so we're just going to have to test and see what looks best all right so um, then I'm also going to go to assets where I have all the components that I have created in this project. By the way, if you are confused about what I'm doing, right, using textiles, using buttons uh, as components, over the course of this series, uh, I have been creating these components or we have been creating these components together for our page. So if you're confused, just try and watch the previous episodes. It has been a gradual process. So especially towards the start of this series, there's a lot of work on these, on these components, right? So here it is. I have on average, our customers see a 30% improvement in something. I would probably, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna select all these three, shift A to add an auto layout and set the auto layout to like 32 and then select these two text objects within this auto layout and set them to fill container, right? So this happens, which I'm gonna fix by doing this. So you can see how it's basically responsive, right? By the way, if you're wondering how to create responsive layouts like that in Figma, uh, I just did that by using fill container but also I have a whole video covering this topic, so definitely go check that out. And then on the right side, I think we're gonna use a frame. So let me press the F tool and then create a frame within the case studies frame, okay? Uh, this is gonna be a placeholder for our image. It is going to be probably gonna span like six columns, so half of the layout. Um, I am going to probably increase the width of this, make it four rows. I'm going to set the fill of this frame, of this new frame to like light gray, just so that we can see what we have there. And then what I'm gonna do is select both of these, shift A, and then set the width of this to 1152. Then the frame number 15, this frame that we have created, that's gonna be fill container. Uh, why am I doing this? It's because when I now resize this frame, right, uh, this, uh, this auto layout, this headline area over here stays the same in terms of width, whereas this is going to change, okay? Because my thinking here is that based on the width of this area, the rest of the hero area is gonna be 
resized. Okay, so I just think that's the way to go. And I think I'm gonna resize this frame. So that's frame 14. Uh, and actually, let's just rename these to be understandable. Frame 14 is going to be called headline, headline area, let's say. Frame 16 is going to be hero area content. I don't know, nothing like that. And then I'm also going to do one thing and that's um, resizing this whole thing to be precisely, to span exactly 12 columns, right? And then I'm going to resize this headline area back to this area, right? So I'm going to go for probably five columns okay so that's gonna be probably like this 466 in terms of width and then i'm gonna also increase the spacing i think i'm gonna add 74 to um, plus 74 to the spacing for the hero area content and then maybe plus 24 again Right, I just want to basically all these elements to align precisely with columns. And then also here I'm going to probably put A on the next line. So shift enter like this. On average our customers see a 30% improvement in something. And also I want to really drive this point home. I'm going to highlight the 30% improvement and then I'm going to click on fill. Use the eyedropper tool and then sample the color from right here from this icon um yeah i think we should also create uh, these color tokens basically when you uh setting up a color so let me show you i go if i use this blue color what i can do i can go to basically similar to text styles i can i can go to styles and create a new color style and i can name this one blue right for example the blue that we are using create style and then whenever i have like a rectangle or an object with a specific fill color i can just go in here and select this blue color right so um didn't yet get to do this actually for the whole website but uh as you can see it's definitely something that would be useful in our workflow so i'm gonna dedicate some more time to that in the future episodes and now let's continue with this what we have here right so um next thing i'm gonna do is probably decrease the opacity of this subheadline to about i don't know 60 percent something like that and let's just launch the prototype and see what the result looks like so far okay uh, i have hi hidden the guides uh, so if you want to hide and show the guides you just you can do that by pressing shift g right shift g layout the grids visible and hidden yep launch the prototype let me hide this. and then I'm going to go to resources okay the, the drop down menu is acting up I'm gonna have to fix that case studies and here we are right so I like this it's nice clean simple and the blue highlight is extremely prominent I like how it stands out now we are going to be designing this image on the right side or prepare the outline for this image to maybe finalize in the future I'm going to borrow a an iPhone mock-up from the features page okay that we have created together in a couple of episodes back. I'm going to press copy. I'm going to copy this over here into this frame. Okay, so now I get about that. I get this. I'm going to select this iPhone uh, mockup and position it approximately like this. I'm going to make it slightly bigger. Okay, so just to show you the final result, uh, it's going to be top side of the phone is going to be visible over here. Okay, now I'm also going to make this rounded. Uh, this image is going to have like, I don't know, 32 in terms of rounding. I'm probably going to turn off the fill later because I just want to keep it really clean. We might put a line over here or something. I haven't decided yet, but we will see. I'm going to show that for now. So we are getting pretty close to the wireframe that we have outlined right for this hero hero uh, area at least and i am going to just copy the headline and i'm gonna use this text object to type in five percent it's gonna be auto width and i'm gonna copy this this is gonna be probably like h3 yep sounds about right and then I'm going to use a tagline style for the description. And I'm going to start typing improvement in something, right? So, oops, improvement in something, okay? I'm going to select both of these. Shift A to add auto layout. Enter, fill container. Shift Enter. Resize to this width. Uh, make the spacing like four. Make this headline probably bigger. 5% headline. Select this again. Go to Selection Colors. And under Selection Colors, instead of this black 
that's gonna be blue, this, okay? And then I'm gonna select this subheadline and reduce the opacity to about 60. Or actually, I think I'm gonna go for black with this one, okay? So that's zero. Then I'm gonna just increase the padding, horizontal and vertical, and then I'm gonna enable a fill. And this fill is gonna be white. And now let me move this over into this frame, okay? So we got this object over here, 5% improvement in something. I'm going to round these corners and I am going to do two things. I'm going to enable effect and first one is going to be background blur. The background blur is going to be like, I don't know, 29, 30 points, something like that. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity of the white fill. So as you can see, as I'm decreasing the fill color, uh, you can see how the blurred background is being starting to be visible. Okay. I'm also going to do another effect, which is going to be drop shadow. So with this effects over here, I'm gonna, you know, add a drop shadow and then adjust these values to be approximately like this. Have a very subtle shadow. I'm also gonna check clip content for this so that I can adjust the spread. That's gonna be negative like this. And then I think I could try and make this go horizontally. Pack contents, pack contents on this as well. We resize this. Yeah, I think this could work better instead of the vertical layout, right? So I change the direction of this auto layout essentially, right? Then I'm gonna change the alignment of this auto layout and maybe remove the spacing altogether, just zero, and maybe reduce the padding as well, like 12, 12, yep. And also the headline is gonna be hack contents, which means we have to add the padding back, like 12, maybe add some more horizontal padding. Yep, I think we could go for this, this design. So let me just copy this like two times so that we match our design over here. So here we could go for like increase efficiency, also hug and decrease the width. This three times increased efficiency and then half, not all caps, half time needed. Hug again, fill again. All right, so here are three benefits floating around the strongest arguments why you should get this app. And I feel like it doesn't really stand out against the white screen. So let me just take this white screen and change that to like gray or something, right? You can see how it nicely stands out now. Or even we could try the blue. No, I don't think so. That's too strong. So why don't we go for like gray and then just add the screenshot later. We're definitely gonna finalize this image later, but for now, let me just paste in um, like these images that we used on our features page, like this uh, screen contents mockup that we have used. I'm gonna position that right here. I'm probably, I don't think I'm gonna use this uh, chart. I don't think that's, see, like that's too much there. I'm gonna just remove this, okay? I'm just gonna use these elements, right? So just random rectangles, basically. So this will just serve as some objects in the background, again, basically just a placeholder, but it looks quite nice, I think. So one of the very basic rules that you cannot break under any circumstances in web design and UX design is text contrast. Um, so as you can see, this is getting quite hard to read and here as well, the blue font against the gray color. So we have to increase the contrast. And to do that, I will probably just add, and to do that, I will probably just increase the opacity of the white background so that it's still kind of transparent, like translucent a little bit, but uh, at the same time, you can read the headlines that are placed on top of this object. So yeah, I think this is way better. Um, I'm gonna just play around with the position of these. Whoops, of these, I'm gonna go right here. And now one more thing, although this wireframe and this layout basically show that the image of the phone is limited with this area, why don't we try and actually disable clip content for this image, which means that the whole phone is now visible and experiment with this type of layout, right? where basically there is no strict boundary of the image. I think this looks quite nice, don't you think? I, I really enjoy this. Um, I really like how the hero image, the hero area kind of interacts with the rest of the page, how it's all intertwined and really interesting to me. Also disable the fill, right? But I think that's, that's just too empty. In any case, let's just try and selecting this phone, grouping all of these elements, moving so that it aligns with the headline. I'm gonna also add the rectangle to this frame to the group. Then I'm just gonna move all of this so that it aligns with this headline on the top and then just make it all bigger like this. 
Let's just take a look at the prototype. Okay, so when you arrive at this page, um, I think this looks quite interesting. I think this is quite engaging because you get like a whole screen. I think I like this where it goes uh, like below the fold when you scroll. Here there could be like some more text or some object. And then here you would get specific stories, okay? So let's just try and putting more text underneath. Let me change that to paragraph text, paragraph body text. And yeah, I feel like this paragraph fits nicely in here, but it also needs a headline. So let's use like H3, H4. So they want extra paragraph. This is gonna be really fully opaque, so 100. Select both of these, Shift A, Enter, Fill Container, Shift Enter and set the spacing to 24 or 16. Okay, I think this looks quite nice, although I think we could get like um, a divider of sorts. So why don't we increase like the top padding of this extra paragraph, add a stroke, and then go to this button over here and go to custom and disable everything except for the top one. It's gonna be just one, one pixel, right? One point. And then decrease the opacity to like 30 and put it around right here, right? So you can see how it nicely divides the layout. When I turn off this stroke, it's, it's a tiny detail, but it does count. So this kind of, all of this blends in together. But when you add this small detail, when you add this line, just watch how it splits the layout and makes it more understandable, at least for me personally. But yeah, I think this is just a tiny detail that really helps you to understand the layout. And then, yep, yeah, then right here below all of this, there could be these individual case studies, these individual stories, and there could be like a whole grid of them, basically, what we have here but that's gonna be for another episode because this tutorial is again getting quite long so i am just going to finish that right here maybe just adjust these colors and play around with the fill again to not break the text contrast rule okay and lastly one thing that i think would be quite nice is if we actually enabled a stroke so we had a fill for this image that we're not going to use but we might use a stroke so let's try using a stroke and also it's gonna be a radial gradient okay and the radial gradient I'm just gonna swap these colors so that the center is transparent black and then position this transparent black to right here so the bottom center of the frame right so we get this I'm gonna create another one that's gonna be also fully transparent right another point and then I'm gonna just drag this out my point here is I would like the stroke to be visible here basically be visible everywhere but as you get closer to the phone it gets less and less prominent okay so something like this and then i'm gonna just decrease the overall opacity of the stroke to about 40 and let's check the final result let me also move this phone a little bit just a tiny bit let's check the final result yep i think this is really nice let me also make the gradient not so strong so remove the middle point again sorry yeah also maybe increase the opacity of this further reduce the rounding to 24. yep I like this, I enjoy this. It's simple yet visually interesting and also we get this extra paragraph. But yeah, this is the final result for today. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know in the comments if there was anything unclear and I will see you in the next episode of designing a website in Figma. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.